Hello and welcome to Care Talk on the Road. My name is Laura Packard and normally I lead a team of experts answering your health care and health insurance questions on Care Talk. Uh, but I am on the road for the next month with Protect Our Care, traveling around the country, learning about and sharing people's personal health care stories. So we have a special treat for you this week. We're going to share several stories with you. And I hope to see you out on the road in the next few weeks. My name is Marie Falatar. I began fighting for healthcare for all and healthcare parity when I was 14 years old, and I am 46. And recently, I've encountered a new pharmaceutical support the medication that helps me eat. I was diagnosed with a rare cancer earlier this summer, and I've lost about 80 pounds due to a loss of appetite. Medications have helped me boost my appetite so I can get in a few hundred calories a day, quite literally pushing nutrients to keep my electrolytes and nutrients balanced, while struggling what is called, with what is called a failure to thrive during cancer treatment. But the drugs that literally help folks remain alive and build lives that allow us to thrive have not been negotiated by Medicare until now. People who are on disability and senior citizens on Medicare, thanks to President Biden and the Democrats, have capped our prescription drugs now, 20 years after Medicare Part D. So people on fixed incomes will receive more help and less people will have to make a choice between food and medicine or take that medicine to get the food. This law sets the foundation of some support that those who struggle with long COVID like me will need. It's been clear among my community, from my friends at the cancer center, to my friends in the medical world, to my friends fighting for fair and transparent elections, that voters want our elected officials to stop Big Pharma from lining the pockets of our elected officials and ripping off the American people with high prescription drug prices. It's clear that rural areas, poor, older, more disabled experience worse health outcomes. It's clear there is racial disparity. And our elected officials work for the people, people who need medication. Said, uh, my name is Amber McCory. I'm a single mom of two kids. And I would like to tell you what having access to health care has done for us. I had hoped I would hold out a little bit longer. Um, Healthcare is the reason that my kids have a mother at least twice over. It's the reason my nine year old daughter can now walk and no longer needs her wheelchair. It's the reason my son is as well adjusted as he is. Healthcare has enabled us to find a medication that, along with physical therapy, means she can walk and run again. She doesn't need someone to push her in her wheelchair at the back of the pack. Imagine if you can, how oh, the lack of health care would add to my already sleepless nights. With as tumultuous as our lives have been these last years, our mental health has taken a significant hit. Not only myself for my struggles and my daughter for hers, I live here in Portsmouth and I've been active in healthcare advocacy since retiring and moving here. I am a senior, so I use Medicare for my health insurance. And it provides me with a really a sense of security that I'm going to get the coverage I need. Just a few months ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And with that diagnosis came an incredible amount of anxiety, and also curiosity, well, what do I have to know? And a lot of focus, because there are a lot of decisions to make in, in deciding what kind of treatment you're gonna get. But one thing I could feel secure in was that my healthcare coverage was not going to be interrupted, and that it would be comprehensive, and that it would allow me and my husband and my family to continue to enjoy the life that we have without health care 
being basically um, a sword of Damocles over our heads. And I think every American deserves that. My name is Ansley Womble, and I'm a proud New Hampshire stepmom. In the spring of 2021, our family lost our employer-provided health insurance due to slowdowns in the, w because of the pandemic. At about $2,000 a month, COBRA wasn't an option for us as we were also juggling other bills. Like millions of other Americans, we were struggling in ways that we hadn't before. A loss in health insurance meant choosing between stopping necessary medication or paying hundreds of dollars out of pocket. At a time when we needed it most, mental health care wasn't accessible. I had no idea how to do this, how to pay for medications for my daughter out of pocket, how to sleep at night worried about emergencies and potential bankruptcy with hospital bills. I was overwhelmed and afraid. When you're facing that much stress, following applications, trying to navigate systems, it looks like it, you're looking up at a mountain from the bottom up and you don't know what to do. I felt like I was drowning, and the supports I had leaned on throughout the pandemic, such as mental health care, wasn't there. Thankfully, I was able to reach out to a friend who connected me with an ACA navigator. Her name was Nancy, and she was in Northern Virginia. I remember because of her warmth and kindness that afternoon. Over the phone, Nancy walked me step by step through the application process, through pay statements, through passwords and security questions all over the phone. Her patience was stunning and line by line we figured things out. We were states apart, but it felt like she was holding my hand in my kitchen at my table saying it's going to be all right. After months of fear, stress and worry, there were definitely tears of relief that day. And do you know what? Nancy was right. My family qualified through ins for insurance through the ACA marketplace. My daughter was able to continue her medication, which helped support her quality of life. I was able to access mental health services. I could sleep easier at night, knowing we were covered if heaven forbid an accident should happen. When my husband had work again, we regained insurance through his employer. The ACA marketplace caught us when we needed it most. I am grateful to hear our elected officials are prioritizing access to health care through the Inflation Reduction Act. Because they did this in the past with, co with COVID support, our family was able to be covered during a stressful time. Because of their continued support with the IRA, more Granite State families like mine will be able to sleep a little easier at night knowing that healthcare isn't something I have to worry about. Hello, my name is Nancy Glenn, and I'm a campaign director for Moms Rising. This is extremely personal for me because I know what it's like to be without health care. In 2020, I was self-employed as an independent contractor, and I didn't have access to any kind of benefits. I couldn't afford health insurance, and the premiums for the plans that were offered in the marketplace were way out of reach for my family to be able to afford. Without health insurance, I avoided going to the doctor, even though I knew something was wrong. I was tired all of the time, the fatigue was heavy and debilitating, and I struggled to get out of the bed in the morning. To be honest with you, I think we all know somebody who doesn't go and get the help that they need when they know that they need it because they're afraid of the cost of healthcare is going to face them. In 2021, I hit a low point when my father passed away. He was a type two diabetic and fortunately, before he passed away, he actually did have a conversation with Congressman Pappas and shared his story about having to ration medication in order to be able to afford it as a type 2 diabetic. He had a heart attack in his sleep due to his diabetes. I miss him every single day, and the grief just added to that layer of fatigue that I was already feeling. I knew that I needed help. Fortunately, at that time, I had started my position part-time with Moms Rising, which provided me health insurance. I finally scheduled a physical, thinking we would discuss treatment plans for depression. But because I had not been to the doctor in four years, they decided to run a complete blood panel on me. When the results came back, I learned that my fatigue wasn't just caused by depression, but like my father, I also had type 2 diabetes. And my liver was on the fritz. Without proper diagnosis or treatment, I was told that 
the diabetes is going to take a horrible toll on my body. My results were actually so bad that even though there's usually a month long wait list to go and see a specialist, I was seen the very next week to be able to get the supports that I needed. I'm extremely grateful for the care that I received with the support of a team of doctors, nutritionist, nutritionists, specialists, as well as proper medications. I was able to make a change in my diet, add in exercise, and I'm now in a totally different place. I lost over 80 pounds and I regained all of the energy that I needed to keep up with my 10 year old son Hunter here. I can go jump on the trampoline with him. We do Ninja Warrior courses together. And yesterday I ran a half marathon along with my colleague Sandra. My name is Erin Gabriel. I'm from Beaver County, uh, just a rural town just outside of Pittsburgh. Um, I've done a lot of these bus tours before with Protect Our Care, and it's always been under the former administration of he who shall not be named. It was great to be here to, with you all this morning to actually celebrate some accomplishments instead of defending things. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, let me start off by telling you a little bit about my family and why we've been working with Protect Our Care for these many years. I'm a mom from rural Beaver County. I have three amazing kids who are all growing up way too fast, and we all know kids can be expensive. Kids with disabilities can sometimes be a little bit more expensive. My youngest daughter, Abby, here turns 13 on Monday, and she was born after a healthy nine-month pregnancy. She was perfect with a full head of beautiful brown curls. And when the nurses took her back for her state-mandated hearing test, I thought I already knew the drill. I had done this three times, and all three times even at the same hospital here at McGee, just down the street. As it turned out, Abby was deaf. She failed her newborn hearing test. And that was just the beginning. The diagnosis of hearing loss brought early intervention into our home. And as this amazing team of therapists started working with Abby, they started flagging a host of other issues, and so did her pediatrician. As her doctor's concerns grew, Abby underwent multiple MRIs documenting structural abnormalities in her brain, multiple EEGs and sleep studies, a spinal tap, skin biopsies, multiple ultrasounds, more blood draws than I thought possible on such a tiny little person. And we were warned repeatedly and consistently by many doctors that she would not be okay. They didn't know what it was, but they knew it wasn't good. They predicted and documented all kinds of regressions and tested her for everything. And as you can imagine, those medical bills get pretty expensive. We were told she might never walk. We were offered a feeding tube because she kept choking on her food. All kinds of, of things that were really terrifying for a young family experiencing this for the first time. But Abby's is a story of everything that can go right with the system. Because of where we live, Abby has had access to the most incredible care. Abby's hearing loss was caught at birth, which meant a dream team of early intervention therapists descended upon our house when she was just four months old. They taught her to eat, to crawl, to walk, to communicate, and understand. It meant she got hearing aids before she was six months old. It meant a team of wraparound therapists came as well to help Abby learn to navigate through a world that was not designed for her. And as she has continued outpatient therapy from several different places that each excel in their own specialty, she has thrived. And there is simply no way we would have been able to afford this care without Medicaid and the protections in the ACA. Now, I know we're here today to talk about the Inflation Reduction Act, not necessarily the ACA, but included in that act are subsidies for families to be able to afford and access quality health care through the marketplace. There's also the lowering of prescription drug costs, which means that kids like my daughter can get the access they need to survive and thrive. Abby is a success story. Abby would not be doing the things that she is, like walking on the trail in the woods behind our house, riding an adaptive bike, or sitting up unassisted on a swing and holding on if she had not had access to the support and medical care that she has, and every kid deserves that. You are looking at a diabetic who served the people of West Virginia, not being able to test herself, giving herself blind insulin because I couldn't afford it. I am the working people. I am the working poor. I am Delegate Danielle Walker. Now, I say first step forward. I'm not done. I'm not done fighting. 
because one in four diabetics in the United States ration or go without their insulin due to affordability. One in four. How is that acceptable in the United States of America? Now, I want to remind you what was just stated. Not one Republican voted for lower drug costs for our most vulnerable and elderly citizens in the United States. Not one. How is that acceptable? So now I'm going to talk about where do we go from here and give you a little bit of my story. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes 28 years ago, prime of my life, healthy as a horse, no idea. Woke up one morning and boom, my life was changed forever. The trajectory, I was getting ready to graduate from college and the whole trajectory of what I had studied for and worked so hard for changed in an instant. Everything. Because I had to be able to afford medication and to afford my health care. That's when insulin was $25 a month for a, uh, a one-month supply. If I lose my job today and I have to go get my insulin refilled, it's a minimum of $1,200 for a one-month supply. I'm just going to, I brought props. <laughs> I have to carry this with me 24-7. I have an insulin pump that is attached to me 24-7. And a continuous glucose monitor that's on my body 24-7. This small vial of insulin, this liquid that keeps me alive, retails for $300. Without insurance, I would pay $1,200 a month because this small vial lasts me a week. That's it. So if I'm underinsured or don't have insurance, it's pay or die. Because there is no negotiation. There's three insulin makers in the United States. There's n and they're all priced in lockstep all three of them. So there's nowhere to go, nowhere to turn, nothing else I can do. I can last maybe five days without insulin. And I've done it. Right after my divorce, I found out that the insurance that my company provided wasn't all that great. My insulin cost as much as my mortgage a month. This was just about five to seven years ago. I had to ration for a year. And if you don't know what that's like, it's terrifying. I'm a single mother. I had to go to bed every night after skipping an insulin dose, wondering if my 10-year-old daughter was going to wake up and find me dead. Are we the greatest country? Does that make us great? This little bottle of insulin is just the liquid. I have to get it into my body. I have to be able to test my blood sugar. So I'm just going to show you what I use every month. To keep myself alive. So the insulin is just one piece, and I have to have backups for my backups. What if my insulin pump doesn't work? I've got to have something else. So you have no idea how much <laughs> this means and how much further we still have to go and how much more work we still have ahead of us. Thanks for listening to Care Talk. 
And please stay tuned as we have more episodes from On the Road, and we're back in November to answer your health care and health insurance questions. And keep in mind that November 1st starts open enrollment. So if you don't have health insurance, or if you're thinking about switching your health insurance plans, you can go to healthcare.gov now and start thinking about your options. Thank you.